So what you'll find is that this is what the heart looks like when it's not sectioned, so the outside of the heart. So that's the heart when it's not cut. Let's talk about these different little tubes. What chamber is that right there? Right atrium, good. What chamber is that right there? Left atrium. Um, we know the right ventricle is going to be on this side, left ventricle is going to be over here. There's actually a lot of fat, so there's um, quite a bit of fat deposits that are going to lie on top of the interventricular septum. So we'll find an orange that's not so bright. Yeah, that's perfect. So you're going to have a bunch of fat deposits that kind of lie right on top of this interventricular septum right here. I mean, the heart is covered with a lot of fat anyways, a lot of supportive fat. You're also going to have a lot of fat that kind of hangs out between the atrium and the ventricles. It kind of hangs out right here. And um, the atria are actually covered by these fatty like flaps called the auricles. This is, this is spelled A-U-R-I-C-L-E. We're still not 100% sure what the function of these oracles are, but they really are these like very prominent fat, like tissue flaps that cover on top of the oracle, on top of the right atrium, and it makes them very obvious, very easy to identify from that external structure. What is the name of this vessel right here? Superior. Superior vena cava. Perfect. Who's that guy? Inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava. And then who is that vessel right here? Uh, Abdominal aorta. aorta. Who's that? The aortic, aortic, aortic arch. arch. You have the three vessels that I labeled, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, left subclavian. This vessel, who's that? It's a left pulmonary. No. Left pulmonary, and then right over right. here is the right pulmonary. Okay. The reason I draw this view is because we need to talk about the coronary arteries. Well, first, let me ask you this. We got all this muscle cell in the walls of the heart. Tons of cardiac muscle. That cardiac muscle is going to need a bunch of energy, a lot of oxygen to stay alive. Where do you think it gets its blood? Does it just absorb blood from inside the chamber? Nope, it can't. It can't because there's actually a layer of epithelial tissue that coats the inside of the chamber just like there's a layer of epithelial tissue that coats the inside of all blood vessels. That layer of epithelial tissue is called the endocardium. And I actually drew the endocardium already. The endocardium is this black line that's on the inside of each chamber. It's called endocardium. And that endocardium is a layer of simple squamous epithelium that separates the blood from the cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle has no access to that blood, but it needs a lot of energy. So it's kind of cool. What the body does is that the first vessels that emerge from the aortic arch are actually not these guys. We have our coronary arteries that emerge from the back of the aortic arch right as it emerges from the left ventricle. These um, coronary arteries is what they're called. You're going to have one on the right side. He's going to come around here. He's going to curve around here, come down here, emerge right here between the um, atrium and the ventricle. This is your right coronary artery. He's going to come down here, and then he's going to circle around like that. If I get a phone call, it stops the recording. All right, which I think it did, but that's okay because I'm just gonna. Oh no, we're good, we're good. All right, so this right coronary artery is gonna come around like this, go wrap around the heart, and go in this direction. The let me make sure I'm right there. I feel like I'm, I'm missing a part. Yeah, that's right. He just has all these extensions that kind of come down as well. Then the left coronary artery comes off to this side, wraps around here. He splits into two very large arteries. One goes over here and wraps around to the back side of the left ventricle. Another very large artery goes right down the interventricular septum. 
and then has the branches that come off. I'm going to label these so you know who's who. So you got right coronary. He's going to wrap around to the right marginal artery. The left coronary is going to split into the left circumflex artery. And then this big one right here is the inter ventricular artery. This is the reason I kind of um, draw them out. It's because these arteries are super important. If, let's say there's some plaque or some like nasty stuff hanging out on the inside of your, your uh, ventricle due to like, you know, just plaque filled up, fat deposits, some of that stuff might break off. And if it breaks off, it's gonna be in the bloodstream. It's gonna get pumped into the aorta. Oftentimes, it might just go into one of those coronaries and it might get stuck in one of these vessels. If it gets stuck, then all of that cardiac muscle cells, all that cardiac muscle that was receiving blood from that tube can't receive oxygen and it dies. That's a heart attack. So a heart attack is when one of these coronaries gets blocked with a clot or plaque or whatever and you've got very rapid death of a part of the heart wall. If it's a big part of the heart wall, this could lead to cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest is a general term for when the heart is unable to pump blood through the body. So it can't do its job. And if the heart attack's big enough, it could lead to cardiac arrest. And that, I mean, that could be fatal without, it is fatal without, um, without assistance. This guy right here, the interventricular artery, he's called the widow maker because he is, supplies such a large part of, um, of the ventricle, blood is such a large part of the heart that if he gets blocked, it's, it's, a, it's a huge problem. Right? And then you can kind of see that he's going to feed blood to both ventricles. So a heart attack there is going to compromise the function of both ventricles. It's really problematic. So a heart attack is just a blockage? Just that? Just do, it's a blockage of the coronary that leads to cell death. Right, uh, those, of those cardiac. And so what you'll have is if someone who's had a heart attack, they will literally have a portion of their heart wall that is just dead tissue and it does not pump anymore. Right, and it, it doesn't come back. I mean, that's just kind of part of it. Um, the severity of the heart attack is obviously, it, you have a huge range there. If a little tiny artery gets blocked, it's gonna affect a smaller portion of the heart than if a larger artery. Also, it's going to cause like troponin levels to increase. You know, you heard about that. It's one indicator of a heart attack. Do you guys remember what troponin was? It's a protein. Talked about it in A and P one. In muscles, right? In skeletal muscles, so you had troponin. It binds to calcium. When it binds to calcium, it allows tropomyosin to get out of the way, so that the myosin heads can bind onto uh, actin. So. It's a protein associated with, with muscle. Well, troponin exists in cardiac muscle cells as well. We'll talk about cardiac muscle cells next time, but they exist as sarcomeres, right? It's very similar to skeletal muscle. When those cardiac muscle cells die, they kind of fall apart, right, as any dead cell does, and troponin gets released in high quantities into the bloodstream. So if troponin is in high quantities in the bloodstream, that's an indicator that some cardiac muscle cells have died. Okay. Um, now, after this blood goes through the coronary arteries, it gets picked up by the coronary veins, and they mimic a very similar pathway as the coronary arteries. They come over here, right, and they drain blood just in the opposite direction of this way. The cool thing about the coronary veins is that all that used blood that's already circulated through the heart collects in what's called the coronary sinus. It's this big pool that exists on the very back of the heart, and it looks like this big vein, right? Then it's positioned right here, and it's this really large kind of like pool of used blood that is collected right there on the back of the heart, 
and then it gets dumped somewhere. Where do you think that used blood gets dumped? Where does it go after it goes into the coronary sinus? Well, yeah, it, it gets dumped right back into the circulation. In fact, it gets dumped right into the right atrium. So it's kind of a nice little system. Okay, we'll take fresh blood coming right out of the aorta, send it to the heart, and after it's used up, we'll dump it right back into the right atrium. So the heart gets first dibs on the blood that is pumped. And so this coronary sinus actually empties right there, and that used blood comes in there. That's this coronary sinus right there. I'll kind of dot it in. Okay. All right, that's it. That's it for lecture today.